Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to a brand new Wild Rift video. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at all the settings available for Wild Rift. We know that sometimes it could be a bit overwhelming with so many options and settings available. So that's what we're here for today. We're here to look through all the settings, give my recommendations and see what's best for you. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and comment down below as well. But without further ado, let's head into today's video. First up, we have the general settings, and the first thing in general settings is the in-game chat. Now, the in-game chat is pretty much completely up to you. I recommend at least putting team chat on, so you can see what your teammates are saying, if they had given any advice or anything. Um, but if you do find that people are starting to be, you know, a bit rude, a bit toxic, the best thing to do is mute them from the scoreboard and not turn team chat off. The way you do this is you click on the scoreboard in the top right hand corner and there's a little mute button next to each of the champions. You just click that little mute button and that means that all chat is blocked. So you're still able to see some chat from some other teammates but just make sure that you just block out all that hate. Next up we have the frame rate. Now the frame rate is pretty important. I would recommend always going for the highest frame rate possible. Some devices only support only 30 FPS, some support 60 and some even support up to 120 FPS. This means that the game will just look smoother, run smoother, and you'll definitely get an advantage the higher frame rate that you're on. Next up, we have the scoreboard. Now, the scoreboard, you've got two options. You've got full screen and you've got half screen. I always recommend going full screen because you're not really going to use it during a fight anyway, so I don't really see how half screen would really benefit you. Uh, for the scoreboard, the full screen looks like this, so you can see pretty much everything that you can see. And it covers up your whole screen, but most of the time, you'll just be walking to lane and you'll be looking at the full screen anyway. If we change it over to half screen, half screen looks like this. So it's a bit more crammed up, so you can't really see as much as what you can see on the full screen. But you can see more of the screen. You can see, obviously, your champion and what's around you. So it's kind of what you want to do. Next up, we have character inking. Now, character inking just shows an outline around character models. Obviously, if you turn it on, it may affect your performance, so just be careful of that. But turning it on is actually really beneficial. As you can see with Kaisa, there's a little black outline around the champion that you can see, and this works with every single champion on your team and on the enemy team. And if you turn character inking off, you can see that the black outline's gone. So it kind of benefits you in a way of you can see champions clearer, you can target champions better as well, and it makes them stand out a little bit more compared to obviously the minions, the monsters, and everything else. Then we move on to screen shake. This just enhances the visuals of some abilities by simulating the screen shaking from an impact. Not really much to stay here, just I would always recommend disabling it because screen shaking can put you a little bit off guard sometimes. So I always recommend just to disable that. And moving down, we move on to floating text. Now this displays damage numbers when dealing damage to enemies. Really, really actually beneficial. You can see how much damage each auto attack is doing. So if you see that the enemy is low on HP, you could take a look at the floating numbers you can see oh do i have enough damage to kill someone is my abilities enough to kill someone obviously if you turn it on it may affect your performance so just keep that in mind now moving across we have the map and the fog of war brightness i always recommend having this as bright as possible obviously be careful because this is probably the biggest thing that will drain your battery and will also make your phone really really hot as you can see you've got the lowest brightness which is down the bottom you can see the map is relatively dark or you could take it up all the way up to the highest brightness. You can see everything is a lot more visual. There's a lot more clarity. Everything's brighter and it's a lot more visually pleasing. Moving on to the next general setting, we have the champions outlined at screen edge. Now, this just means that the champions have a team color outline if they're near the edge of the screen. It's actually really beneficial because sometimes when you're kind of concentrated on something and then someone pops out of nowhere. You don't know if it's actually a teammate or you don't know if it's a enemy because you might not be looking at the minimap when you're in a team fight. But this just means that when you get close to an enemy champion, you can see at the edge of the screen, you'll be able to see that it has a red outline. You can see there. There's a little red outline around the Garen in the top right hand corner and you can see that's where the champion team outline comes in. As you can see it's red so we know it's an enemy but if you turn it off that red outline would not be there. Moving on to the last general setting we have the health bar name displays. This is all just personal preference. There's not really anything I'd recommend. It just depends how you want to play. If you just want it to be champion you could just see the champion name above every single champion team and enemy. 
If you want it set to none, you can be set to none so you just see the health bar so you don't haven't got any names or anything distracting you. Or if you want to, you can have the player names if you want to as well. The player names just displays all the players that are available in the game. So instead of having a champion name or having none, it will have all the player names. Now let's take a look at the control settings. And there's a lot of important settings here that we're going to go through. Uh, first off is probably the most important setting out of this whole video. It is portrait lock. Now, portrait lock is a thing at the side of your controls, as you can see by the picture on screen. You can see that each of the enemy champions are displayed just above where your abilities are. This is super important, especially during team fights, as when you tap on the icon, you'll be able to target that champion. I'll quickly show you how it works. As you can see, Garen is in front of me. As you can see, there's a little Garen icon above. I can just tap the icon and I'm targeting him all the time. So this makes sure that you're targeting the right person with your auto attacks, with your abilities. And obviously, if you tap it again, it takes it off. Now, there's two different displays. You have the fixed display and you have the priority display. These are just two different displays, whatever one that you prefer. The priority display is whatever one is closest to you. It will be numbered between, you know, one, two and three, etc. Or you can have the fixed display, which means that every single champion will have their fixed number. So like Annie, for example, on the picture will always be number five. Vayne will always be two and Twist of Fate will be four. But if you prefer to have the, you know, the number one target priority always being the closest, then make sure that you go for the priority display. Next up, we have the targeting priority. For this one, you have two options. You have the low health percentage and you have the low health absolute. As you can see on screen, the low health absolute, tap cost in ability or attack priority is a champion with the least amount of health in range. And low health percentage is that tap costing an ability or attack priority is a champion with the lowest percentage of health remaining. Again, with this one's pretty much personal preference. Uh, for me, I just have the percentage one because I like to make sure that I prioritize people with the lowest percentage health. Uh, but you can go for the absolute as well. Next up, we have force attack follow. Automatically moves your champion towards out of range targets. This... I always recommend to everyone to turn this off. This could sometimes put you a little bit off guard. If you're tapping an ability and if a champion's nearby, it will always go towards that champion. If you want to have a bit more free reign of where you want to go with your ability, who you want to attack, then it's always best to turn this off. Next up, we have the dash in move direction. Again, a very important one to make sure you turn on. As you can see the difference on screen, you can see that when you turn the dash and move direction on, it will make sure they will always look at your movement cursor. So whatever direction that your movement cursor is in, when you use a movement ability, you'll be able to dash in that direction. But if you turn it off, you need to make sure that you pretty much manually cast your abilities. Next up for the control settings, we have the movement stick types. There's three different options. You have default, follow, and locked. Default is just your standard default. Wherever you, wherever you start the movement with your movement stick, it will go into that position and you can move in pretty much any direction. If you put it on follow, then the follow will basically follow you every single time you move. This one's, a, I would say, a little bit distracting if I'm playing a game and if I'm seeing the movement of my move stick just being moved all over the place, it will kind of be a little bit distracting. And then you have the locked button. The locked button is basically the movement stick will always stay in place. Doesn't matter where your finger will go, the movement stick will always stay in that one place all the time. I like to have this on default. Again, it's personal preference. I wouldn't really recommend follow as it can be a bit of a distraction at times as well. Moving down, we have the action cancel method. Again, a very, very important setting in Wild Rift. You have two different options. You have the default, which means that when you use an ability to cancel the ability, you need to move it up to the X button, which is normally at the top of your screen. And then you have alternative, which has a radius around the ability. And if you move your finger outside of that radius, it will cancel the ability. I always recommend to have this on default. Um, it's just a lot easier to know when you're using your ability and when you're canceling your ability. Sometimes with the other mode, you won't be able to really realize. But with this, as you can see, my W, I can use this. I can move my finger wherever I want. If I want to, to the other side of the screen, if I really want to. And then all I have to do to cancel it is move it up to the X button. It's not really a big distance anyway, and it's a lot easier to just move it up to the X button. And if you change this to alternative, then obviously that X in the top right-hand corner gets moved. And it's now in the direction of where you're aiming it. So as you can see, it's in a different place pretty much all the time. And it's a little bit, 
you know, a little bit distracted because you've got an X that's always moving around with you. And sometimes you can kind of move your finger a bit too far up if you feel like as well sometimes. And then you accidentally cancel the ability. Whereas with the normal mode, you know that when you cancel your ability, you need to move it to the top right all the time. Doesn't matter what ability you're using, you always just need to move it to that top right to the X button. So you can move your finger around to whatever you want and you don't have to worry about cancelling the ability at all. Now moving over to the right, you have the button aim sensitivity and the dead zone size. The button aim sensitivity is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a sensitivity of the button. With the button aim sensitivity, I like to have it a little bit lower than normal. This gives you just a bit more accuracy when using your abilities, as you can see with Kaiser's second ability here. I'm only moving my finger around ever so slightly. As you can see, there's a little bit more accuracy. I'm moving on to dead zone size. This is basically what the difference between tapping and aiming an ability. It's basically the size of where your small finger movement will make a difference. So the bigger you increase it, the more you have to move your finger to be able to aim it. As you can see, if I go and increase a dead zone to the fullest, then if I'm holding the ability, if I move it ever so slightly up, you can see where my finger is pointing there. You can see my little finger. And that's how far up I need to move it to be able to use the aiming mechanic. If I put dead zone to the lowest, all you need is a little tiny shove. As you can see there, the dead zone is a lot smaller. So I can see that all I need to do is move my finger up a little tiny bit within radius and then I'm able to aim the ability. So I like to have this at around about the center. I don't want the dead zone too big because I do like to aim my ability sometimes. I don't really want to auto cost it all the time. But at the same time, I want to make sure that if I am tapping the ability that it makes sure that it taps it all the time. So if I accidentally move my finger a little bit up as I'm tapping it or anything like that, it doesn't automatically aim. Next up, we have the lock button sensors. This is basically when you use an ability, the center of the button, if you turn this on, will always be where the center of the icon is. But if you turn it off, it will basically be where your finger is. As you can see here, if you turn it on, you can see that the center, even though the person's finger is a bit lower, it will always be on the center of the ability. Or you can turn it off, which is recommended, which means they will always be where your finger is. I always recommend to people to have this off just because it makes aiming a lot easier. You have a bit more flexibility with your hand movement and with your finger movement. So you don't actually need to be at the center point of the buttons every single time. You could be a little bit off, but you'll still be able to use the ability. And then finally for the controls, we have the button layout. Now the button layout is pretty much your backbone. This is where your freedom comes in and you can move any button in any direction at all. The only thing I would really recommend is just being free with it. Just do what you want to do, check out new things, move buttons around, do whatever you want to do and see what's best for you. For me, as you can see, most of it is pretty much standard. The only thing I've really done is moved around the boots active with the barrier so that my summoner spells are right next to my thumb so I don't need to move that much to be able to hit my flash or hit my barrier. Now we can take a look at all the different camera settings. The first one is the aim panning. Really, really important to make sure that you turn this on. As you can see, there's a lot of a bigger field of view with having it on than turning it off. When you use abilities, it basically means that if it's a ranged ability like Lux's ultimate or Kaisen's second ability, when you aim it in a direction, the camera will move out further. So you're able to see a lot more of the map and you can kind of aim your ability a lot better. Whereas if you have it off, the camera will always be on the champions. So you can't really see what's in front of you. You can't see if you're hitting enemies or anything like that. So make sure you always have this on. As you can see, if I use my second ability here, my camera goes basically to the middle of the ability and not actually to the middle of my champion whereas if i turn this off then aiming the ability can be a little bit awkward because i can't really see where my ability is going to i can't really see further in front of me i have to like maybe use my mini map and do it like this which might be a little bit awkward because you want to kind of move around at the same time that you're using your abilities so it's always best to make sure that you have this on so you can see a lot more of the map and you can see where your ability is aiming to Next up, we have the camera pan sensitivity. This is basically you have a little area just above where your abilities are, icons are. And this is where you can kind of move around and you can kind of see what's around you. This is basically the sensitivity of that. So if you turn it up to full, then you can see it's just next to the ward icon for me on the left hand side. You can see that I can move it around. But as you can see, I'm only doing little finger movements here 
and <laughs> the maps are moving around quite quickly on the high sensitivity. So I'd like to have it down normally at about 30% so you can be a little bit more accurate and you can just see what's around you as you're moving around. This can help a lot, especially during laning phase, if you want to have a look at the lane to see where the, how low the minions are or see how low the enemy is. Have a look around the jungle, see what's happening around the map. Uh, it's actually really beneficial, but I always recommend to have it on a bit of a lower setting. Next up, we have the ability mini cam. This is really, really important to turn on, especially on champions like Ziggs. You can obviously aim, like, for example, your ultimate. You can aim it in direction, but you never really know how much damage it does unless you move your camera in the direction of where the ultimate is. But that's where the ability mini cam comes in. Wherever you use your ultimate, there'll be a camera just above where your ultimate lands. So you can see that if you damaged an enemy or if you killed an enemy or if they're low enough, you're able to maybe flash in and kill them off. Next up, we have the death and spectate panning. This is basically when you move your finger around. Do you want it in the same direction as where your finger's moving or do you want it inverted in the opposite direction? I'm just saying now, hashtag team natural. Inverted can never get used to it, never will. Uh, let me know if you are team natural or team inverted. Next up, we have the semi lock camera. Now, I really like this feature. Some people don't really use the feature, but I do use it sometimes. The semi lock camera actually puts a little eye at the top right hand corner of your screen. You can see it on my screen now. And what it does, it basically makes your camera in a different direction. So, as you can see now, as I'm moving around, my camera is a lot different. So I can't really see a lot of behind me, but I don't really need to because my tower's behind me. So I can move my semi-lock camera to the lane, so I'm not actually needing to use my camera movement or my camera pan as much. I could just use the semi-lock camera, put it in a position that I want to, and if I want to move it back, I just tap it and it goes back to normal. Move on, on to the last section, the utilities. First up, we have the minimap auto path in. I personally really like this feature. It basically means when you tap on the minimap, you'll move to that location. Instead of if you have it off, tapping the minimap will just immediately pan your camera to that minimap section. So it's really, really nice. Like I said, if you tap, if you're going into laning phase, you can just tap on the minimap and it will automatically go all the way down to where you want to. So this is really useful when moving back to lane if you want to have a look at your shop or if you want to have a look at your scoreboard. And then next up, we have the warding aimers assist. This helps place wards inside bushes. I normally have this off because I like to be a bit more free with my wards. I don't want the wards to always be inside of the bush. Sometimes this can restrict you quite a lot. But if you're new to Wild Rift, I definitely recommend and turning this on having wards in the bushes are really really important this gives you vision inside the bushes if you're used to wild rift and if you're used to league of legends in general i'd normally say recommend to turn this off as it can be a bit of a nuisance at times especially when you're trying to ward just in the river and not where the bushes are next up we have the level up suggestions i have this turned on but it doesn't really make a difference it's just when leveling up highlights the recommended ability there's not really a lot of difference between turning this on or off um, all the abilities will always basically light up. But then after that, you have the auto level up. I always have this off because most of the time, the recommended level up feature is not always the best way to level up. So having this off and being a bit more flexible with how you're leveling up is quite nice. But again, if you're new to the game and if you don't really know what to level up first, you can go with the recommended first. But I recommend taking a look at guides like on the YouTube channel right here. I have plenty of champion guides on here. So if there's a champion that you guys want to see, let me know and I'll do a guide on them. So you can use that as a bit of a reference instead of using the recommended level up section. Because like I said, sometimes it's not always the best way to go. And at the bottom, we have the ping magnifier. Now, when you use the pings on the top right-hand corner, you can see the pig ping magnifier is in the top left-hand corner at the moment because it's fixed. So if you want to ping to attack the turret, you can see the magnifier is on the top left-hand side of the minimap every time. So if I want to ping about Baron, I can ping to attack Baron. But if you turn the ping magnifier onto the follow your finger, you can see the magnifier actually follows you. So sometimes this could be helpful. Again, it's a bit of a personal preference thing. For me, I like to have it fixed so then I can see the rest of the map because sometimes the ping magnifier can block the mini map as well. So you can't really see about where any of the teammates are or anything like that or where your enemies are. So I always like to have it fixed so I can still see the whole mini map whilst trying to move around and trying to ping onto where I want to. And that's it. That's everything you need to know about all the settings available in League of Legends Wild Rift. Hope you learned a thing or two and hopefully I helped you out with the settings. If there is any questions or anything that you want to know, let us know down in the comments. 
Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel as always and stay tuned for the next video. Take care, stay safe and I'll see you all very soon. Peace.